He's had multiple Grammy nominations, won a Grammy, sold a lot of records, and he's here today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Mr. Anthony Hamilton. Sitting here, guess I didn't make bad. Got time to start it again. Started when I was nine years old. How y'all doing? So the book is called Cornbread, Fish, and Collard Greens. Inside the music from Anthony Hamilton, number one on Kindle first week. It's available on Amazon. So everybody, we need you to go support this book. All right, we need y'all to support this book because it actually is really cool because he talks about his music. Come on, have a seat. He talks about his music, but he also talks about uh, recipes, favorite recipes. So we're gonna get into all of that. Some scriptures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually. Some Charlene. I was. I, I just got the book today. And um, I was looking through it, and I, I don't think I've read a lot of bio books of artists. I've never read a book like this. It's just very interesting the the, um, the stories that you tell. Um, but but first, let's get to cornbread, fish, and collard greens, and explain all of that because there's a reasoning behind that with your music. Um, it's southern. It, okay. it speaks to my soul. It speaks to a lot of our souls. Um, this meal is a complete meal. There's substance there, you know what I mean? Yep. And cornbread is stability. Stability, that's what it symbolizes for me. The fish, serenity, and the ability to move through life and maneuver. And the nourishment from family, friends, it's, it's the collard greens. So think about that for what he just said, right? Think about good food and family yeah. And how that makes you feel, right? Everybody, you get like a, you just start, when, he, when you just, <laughs> when you said cornbread, I was just like, man, it is nothing like yeah. that time. When, it's not just a holiday. Would you just with your family and we had some good soul food and we had some cornbread and how everybody's just in a good mood. Nobody's stressed out. Everybody's just chill. Until it's gone. Until it's gone. <laughs> So you from Charlotte, North Carolina, right? We're born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. So just going through a little bit of your career, I remember you very early on. What I, I, I appreciate about your career is how you kind of built your foundation before you were Anthony Hamilton, the solo artist. So you were very young and left North Carolina to go <laughs> move to New York City. How old were you when you did that? I think I was 21, 22. So 22 in years my old. Early 20s. A kid from North Carolina. That's a big, man, North Carolina, New York City. That's two different worlds. It's way different. <laughs> so. Scary different. How did you, what made you decide to make that move and what was it like for you when you get to the big city? Well, there was a guy named Mark Sparks who I speak about in the book. Uh, who took a lot of us to, to New York and LA over the years. Sunshine Anderson and he was working with Mary J. Blige. Um, Grand Poobah and some of the older groups and he did shoot for salt and pepper so he was from Waysboro, North Carolina and he got a whiff of my talent he heard it once or twice people kept talking about it. I was doing talent shows I was doing any thousand sing anywhere because your voice yeah it stands out like when you hear this brother sing and mm. and the nappy roots so yeah. like the, the nappy roots was like the really the first time I recognized who you were in the video and yeah. just your voice was really unique Thank you. I, I had been singing for a long time. I had been signed to Uptown MCA. I was touring with Joe to see. I was opening up for them. Uh, I was signed and was about to go. Um, they were like, you're about to be the next big, big thing after Joe to see. And then the company folded. Yeah. Uptown folded and MCA took me in. And Heavy D was over my project at the time, but it was an older project to him. So they didn't have that passion. So then again, I was sat to the side. Now, you also wrote You Know What's Up from Donnell Jones. Yeah, was that your song? No, I co-wrote it. You co-wrote it with him? Yeah. And that was a big record. I needed that. At that yeah. time, uh, everything kept starting. You know, looked like it was not going to happen. And that was just a sign from God, like, keep doing it. Right. I'm placing you strategically, and I'm putting you where you need to be. So if you give up, you're going to miss the whole thing. So so you have a couple of songs. So, you, so of course, that's a, 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 a setback. You get to New York. You sign to a label. Yeah. Your, your fellow brothers from North Carolina, Jodeci, are killing it. Mary J. Blige and Puff obviously leads to, to do uh, Bad Boy. But now you're kind of almost having to start over again. Yeah. How was that? How, how did you um, keep going? Because a lot of people, that would, that, that would crush people. Well, the first time it happened, because it happened a few times, I was okay. 
I felt like, all right, that's cool. I'm here. I made it this far. I'm in Charlotte. From Charlotte, I'm in New York. I'm around everybody. I knew Puff. I knew everybody. I've been to Russell's house, Andre's house. So I was like, I'm all right. I'm good. It's just a minor setback. So they started shopping me around, and people wanted to buy me out of my deal. And then I went to Harrell Entertainment, which was uh, Andre Harrell, who started Uptown. And it was supposed to have distribution through Sony. That fell apart. Jeez. Now it's starting to look a little crazy for me. Uh, I stuck with it. I started doing some writing stuff. And uh, eventually, I signed to Mark, the guy who took me up. He had a, a Soul Life. He had Soul Life and Sunshine Anderson and all them. And they were blowing up really well. So I had gotten signed to Jive Records, where Nappy Roots was. They put me on that record. That started bubbling up. I did the song with Jada Kiss, Why? So those two were in the music, you know, circulating on radio. People wanted to know who I was again. Yep. And then I had a, I was, I was born again. Then I got signed to uh, Jermaine Dupri after a series of events, and the rest has been gone. So you uh, had some ups and downs. So this is good to make mental notes, everybody, because there's a lot of. How many people in here are dreamers? You, you're, you have ideas and things you want to yeah. do, and. Um, a lot of times doors are closed in your face, a lot of opportunities that you think are right in front of you are not there, and it's so hard to get off the mat. Some of those doors have reflections on them where you can see yourself. And at that point, that's when you pay attention to who you are. And if you're being true to yourself, and your reflection is representing who you are, stick with it. If not, re re you know, reevaluate who you are before you make the next step, because once you're locked in there, and you're not being who you're supposed to be. You're locked into a, a false sense of who you are, and then you won't, you won't have any control. They'll puppet you all through. So sometimes those doors closing up, it's a good time. But once you get on the other side, you'll be ready once you're ready. Yeah. So then you take off, and you have After Why. Why was a huge single in hip hop, and you have a, a definite connection with hip hop. You did a couple records with a lot of, with a lot of hip hop artists. Tupac. And, yeah. And now you're a solo artist. You come out, you got your first project, your first big project, and you have these songs. And what's great about this book is that you go through almost all of your songs and tell some stories about the song. So one of the first big records that you had was Charlene. Yeah. And that was just such a great song. Thank you. And I, re I just realized today, because I read this book, you guys go, go get this book now. Amazon right now, okay? <laughs> Kendall is selling out like crazy. Yeah. Uh, Charlene was a song about you being in love with a woman and in love with music and having to make a choice. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about that. That's deep. Well, sometimes you, you're in relationships and you're so in, invested into the man-woman relationship that you let your careers suffer. Some people, if you're weak to love and it's not balanced, then you, you know, you forget about who you are, who you're supposed to be in your dreams and just be there for somebody else. I was too in love with music to, to, to not nourish that and go with music. Um, so was I, the woman named Charlene? No, you can get sued. Okay, got, got it. Yeah. So but, but that name, that can name, God gave yeah. me that name, because yeah. I don't know not L Charlene, not L <laughs> I was like, who in that L Charlene? So there's a woman in New York who you were in love with yeah. while you were building your career yeah. and you had to make a choice, you couldn't couldn't give your all to both? No, not the way that it was going. I, I felt like I would have been, they would have been taking a lot, sucking a lot of life out of me. Right. And I wasn't, I wasn't, I was too in love with music. But it was painful. I'm sure it was. To make that decision, you know what I mean? It's almost like leaving, leaving your mom to go be somewhere where you know, you know, like I know she's gonna love me. Right. But I gotta grow up. And, and go so to the next level. did she realize this song was about her? And like, did you did you remain in contact with this woman? Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Softly, softly. So what's up, little boo? What's up, baby? Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> but that's heavy, man. That's that's yeah. that's heavy. No, nah, we never really get. We never got back together, but right. we stayed in contact. Right. Until so, I called the police. On I called the police. No, I'm just <laughs> and then so. During all this time, you are also maturing because you get married and you, you have a family. And your wife was your background singer? 
Yes, my so, ex-wife, my your, former wife. Your former wife. So, so your former wife was a your was background singer. And then you, then you're married again now. No, no. Where, where you get that? That's not okay. That book. Okay, I hope okay. Because I was drunk if I wrote that. Okay, book. I didn't listen. I, I didn't see anything about divorce. So anyway. Yeah. No, I'm not married yet. Okay, but, got it. But, but I will get married again. Okay. It's a All beautiful right. thing. There's a second chance in love. I'll be really ready this time. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm grown. So, so let's talk a little bit about um, some other songs in the, that you talk about in your book and food. Talk about the food part of it because you give a lot of really interesting recipes in the uh, in the book. It's sort of like the third part of the book. And tell us about your love for food and cooking, and, and where did that come from? Southern, being around good food, growing up on it, smelling it, tasting it. And, you know, once I went off to New York, I had to fend for myself a lot. And some of the other guys, there was about 30 or 40 people living in one house. So Mark was out making money to feed us all. Somebody had to cook. So I was like, I'll do it. And I had never really cooked in my life. And so I got... I got in there and I started, I started making these big pans of lasagna. I fried about 80 pieces of chicken in one night. I was tired, but we had to eat. And so from there, I was like, you know what? I think I can do it. And just going home, seeing mom and dad cooking and going back, trying new stuff. And once I got, you know, my own place, I was really cooking. And then I fed somebody who smiled real nice to me. I really started cooking. Yeah, you go with man. How many women like, like feeding a woman, boy? She yeah. <laughs> it's like how many women love a man that can cook? That's got to be an amazing turn on, right? Like oh I wash dishes too. So while you wow. on your sleep, wow. While you sleeping, I'm washing dishes and yeah. folding clothes and stuff too. If I do it, I do it. You just dropped 50 points just now, man. I do it. You all star right there. Yeah, man. All right, and then write a song about you. Yeah. yeah. Come on now. And I come to bed smelling good. Wow. So let's talk about um, the, the, the point of it all. Tell us a little bit about that song. That song is a beautiful song. Actually, it was, it was almost a mistake, a beautiful mistake that happened. I had been recording with these guys, the Avila Brothers, mm -hmm. and uh, some amazing Mexican guys who did confessions, a lot of that whole uh, Usher Raymond's album. Well, Usher, I know Usher Raymond. I'm dating myself now. But the whole Usher album, um, and they were incredible. But we couldn't get, we couldn't jail anything mm -hmm. that night. And we tried a few different ideas. So I got my backpack. I was like, well, I'm going to go get some rest and we'll come try it again tomorrow. So the guitar player started playing it. And they started tamping around. I was like, that sounds kind of strange. So I'm going to stick around a little bit, be nosy. And he started that beat. Doom. I was like, hmm. And they started playing other chords. I was like, I put my book bag down. Yeah. And I was like, I can't stay away from you too long. Oh, yeah. And then Big John, who just passed away, who co-wrote and produced it, he was like, and the point of it all is I love you. And from there, I was like, this song sounds beautiful like a wedding. And that's the energy I wanted to put in it. It felt like love, and it felt like real care, and, and, and that's what I wanted to do. And a lot of people have used that song in their weddings. Yes, and I had to sing it for a lot of weddings, and, and videos, send the videos. Send it to my cousin, she can't mad, huh? <laughs> so I had to do all that. I do a lot of love, charity love for, for family and friends. All right, so I know you guys have a lot of questions. Um, Anthony Hamilton is here, so let's get it started. I see there's too many faces here. Y'all want to talk to Mr. Anthony Hamilton? Make sure you get the book. Hey, Symphony. Okay, we have Mike on both sides, so I'm going to start okay. right here in the center with the fellas. All right, we're okay. going to try to get as many as you guys in. How you doing? Hey, brother, how you doing, man? Doing well. My name is Quincy Shannon. I'm part of the Urban League Young Professionals in Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Thank you for being here, brother. You as well. My question for you is I've had a chance to see you on concert, and the Hamiltons were behind you singing, and I'm curious, how were you, how instrumental were you in constructing your background singers? What is your thoughts on their career as they're moving forward and doing some of the different things that they're doing? They came to me as a gift, uh, piece by piece. Jay Vito, who, who's actually my cousin, the tall, dark of him, with the beard, uh, he came to me first and then brought in Tui. I saw Tui around, the light-skinned guy with the big beard. 
And uh, we never really talked. He seemed really to himself. And then they brought in Tony Lilo. Once those guys got together, and I heard how perfect they were, how amazing and churchy they were, I was like, this is, this is perfect for me. I had had women, then I had men and women, uh, co-ed background singers. Um, but when they got together, it was just like a brotherhood. And so we started doing a lot of amazing things, great shows, they had great energy, um, and they were perfect. And then they started blowing up, and you know they started getting booked for other stuff. So I was like, hmm. People were like, what are you gonna do now that the Hamilton was doing that whole thing? I said, I'm gonna keep singing. But what I did, I, I gave them a great platform, set them because they deserved it, and that I would champion them, and I still do it. And now that they're out, putting out their own album and all that stuff, I'm very supportive. And I got three younger guys out of Florida now called the Solos, who are really good. So I'm like the I'm like the Harry Tubman for background singers. <laughs> Wow. And early in your career, you actually sang background for D'Angelo, right? Yeah. On the Voodoo tour, right? Yeah, I toured with him for about two years. Wow. Went all over the world. So you had so much experience in the business. Do you uh, think that helped you when you became a solo artist on your own to, to do all of those things, write songs behind the scenes, tour and whatnot? Oh, yeah. And, and how to pick a musician, how to pick great background singers. I learned that from D'Angelo. His ear is incredible. This guy is really a whole nother alien when it comes to music. Um, and keep him in your prayers because he's a special being. So when you're a special being, you get attacked by all kind of things. But he taught me how to be a leader from, from just being a background singer, seeing how it moves, what parts are important, putting a show together showing out. I don't know if you ever see me live, but I shows out. Yeah. I guess down. But I learned that from being able to express myself and seeing him showing out. I was like, you know what? If it doesn't feel like this, I'm not doing it. And so when I go to put the show together, it has to feel like old school R&B, James Brown, all that good stuff. It's got, it's got to be funky at some point. Yeah. All right, we got a question over here. Oh, right here. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. Uh, my name is Philip Raymond Young. Um, I'm just a guest here at uh, National Urban League. Uh, first off, before I answer the question, I'm going to say um, I really enjoy your music. You Thank have a you. lot of Thank soul. You. You're you. definitely talented. Anybody who doesn't uh, recognize that is a fool. Yeah. So I'll just say I'm really... I'm taking him with me. Yeah. <laughs> a publicist. Okay. So um, after hearing your music, um, especially... Um, your al your first album, um, I I know that you, you know it's, you have a lot of you get a lot of ideas from that inspire you to write to compose your music, and I just want to know like what specifically like what kind of I guess elements uh, do you get your your um, ideas for writing your songs that you know we we recognize. I think just. I'm, I'm wanting to pay attention. I'm a people watcher. And, and coming up through life and being a child, you have all these memories and all these feelings and all these things you've been through, the good and the bad. I know how to tap back into what I was feeling and, and sing, sing it. Uh, I think real life is, is the most uh, precious gem when it comes to writing. You can pull from life, relationships, and yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, we're gonna take two more questions. I no, know. We're gonna, let's do more than two. I know. I want to keep them all day. We're gonna do two more questions, and then I want to give you some good information that you're gonna want to hear after this. So we'll go with this gentleman, and then that young lady in the front. Can we get some more women, though? Can we get a couple? Please. Ladies? Here, let's we, go with the lady I, I mean, in the front. I, I, I know the fellas in here, but there the ladies, go. we gotta get some questions from ladies. <laughs> First off, um, I sing Best of Me at every karaoke, oh, but I don't do you. it nearly as much justice. Thank you. Um, my name is Maria Hill, and I'm the VP of the Guild in Cincinnati. My pleasure. And um, a lot of us enjoy your music. What can we expect from you in the future if you're allowed to share? Wow. I'm working on a new album now. Yeah. Oh, man. I got some things for y'all. Like, I know it takes me a long time to put it out, but I don't like just putting out garbage. It's got to hit me, and it's got to be real. It's got to... I got one with Rick Ross that feels like an old, like my life, Mary J. Blige. It's so dope. 
and, and it's uh he's like uh Anthony Hamilton on the choir, Ricky Rose on the poetry. It's one of those, he goes in to a whole nother grown level. Um, I have one called Pillows, uh, where I bury my secrets. That song, that. White Hennessy, I have one called White Hennessy. That's beautiful, it's a beautiful song. And I have one featuring uh, Rick James, and it's, it's so creative. It's, I think that one might be first. Wow, we look forward to that. We got a question, yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good evening, Sheena Smith from Atlanta, Urban League. Hey, Sugar. So my question is, you have been in the industry for a very long time, and I know you've seen a lot. 25 years. Yes. Wow. What would you tell somebody who was coming in? What would you tell them to, about the journey to better prepare them to come into what you've seen and been through? Be educated. Be educated about how music is moving now, how to sell music how to market music, and uh, pay attention to what's, what's selling and what's popular. And if you can take your true self and, and blend the two, it'll be a better ride for you as a business person. But creatively, be open. Uh, do it. Don't be afraid of it. Learn about saving money. Learn about investing money. Learn about owning your own music, your own having rights to your stuff. That's very important because you don't want to go through life giving everything away and you get to a certain age and you don't have anything to show for it. And have fun. Have fun. Protect yourself. Protect your spirit. Build a good team. Your team, you're only as good as your team. If your team sucks, you're going to suck. If your team is awesome, you're going to be awesome. I think that's the best thing I've heard this whole week, the, yeah. the conference. People don't understand the people you keep around you yeah. and that you want to build with are so important. And they have to represent you in a way yeah. that doesn't embarrass your brand. Because yeah. that's so, I don't care if it's your mama, your cousin, they got to go home. Yeah. Yeah, because they messing up. All right, c a couple quick questions. Pray. Tell me a little bit about that song. Pray for me? Yeah, pray for me. I'm sorry. Oh, I wrote that. Me and Babyface co-wrote that together. What was it like working with Babyface? Incredible. I was just him. He came to see me perform uh, somewhere. Where was I? I was somewhere. But he came maybe about two, three weeks ago. Oh, wow. I think it was, was it New Orleans? Nah, it wasn't New Orleans. It was somewhere. But he came and uh, we talked about writing again. There's some songs that we didn't put out from the last writing session that are really, really good. And I told him I want to do more something kind of country. You know he kind of has a country feel to his this music. This is his anyway. hometown. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. And great guy. But the song was totally different. Pray For Me was... I was going through a relationship and I was breaking up with one person and, and I was being unfaithful. And I was like, I need to write from this place. You know what I mean? You know, get out of being ashamed and just write from it. But the song was totally different. It was like... <clears throat> If I'm not good to her, what makes you think that I will be good to you? Y'all need to get together and pray for me. And it was like that. But right. Babyface took it and he made it a classic. I was stupid, really stupid. Something told me to be psycho. He turned it all around and made it, you know. So wow. we just started from that point and turned it into a classic. All right. Out of your recipes that you put in the book, give us your top two recipes that are just... Oh, hands down, my cat would just smack you in the mouth. <laughs> smack your whole tongue out your mouth. I'm, t I'm telling you. I it's put the my seasoning. Cat it's the seasoning. Man, it's just them onions. You put the onions in the in the oil with a little butter and the little sea salt. You don't need to do that. Yeah. All right, yeah. so cabbage is one thing. What else? Curry corn. Um... I'm more, I eat more plant-based now and some seafood. Okay. I kind of changed my diet, but I can make a mean lamb, lamb, curry lamb. I can make a honey dill salmon. I make a great salmon spaghetti. That's pretty good. So, everybody, you got to get this book, Cornbread, Fish, and Collard Greens. Yeah. And if you decide to make some of the food and post it on social media, Hashtag AH Soul Food. Yeah, all right. Want to give me a little shout out because we want to see it. <laughs> and please tell all your friends and family as you post here today to spread the word about this book. It's actually a great gift as we have the holidays coming up. 
or if you have somebody that that's, um, uh, loves music and loves to cook, it's a great gift and it's a really good read. And thank you, Anthony Hamilton.